Today we're going to paint a landscape painting, folk art style rock painting. The paints I'm using are listed on the left, but you can use any that you have. I'll be using three types of brushes today. A flat brush, small, a small round brush, and for the tree, I'll be using a script liner brush. But as always, use the brushes that you feel comfortable using. I've applied a layer of Liquitex Medium to the uh, surface to absorb some of the paint. I love working in folk art style because of its simplicity of design and the muted colors used. I'm using white, blue, and yellow as the first base layer. Remember, acrylics dry two shades darker, so let it dry completely before deciding if you want to add additional colors. Since spring hasn't totally hit our area, I live in the Midwest, in the U.S., so I wanted to include a little bit of the fall-ish type of color scheme. You can skip this part if you're happy with a spring-ish type of color palette. Hi, welcome to George on the Rocks. If this is your first visit to George on the Rocks, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. In either case, thanks for visiting. I really appreciate your stopping by. So tell me, have you ever painted a folk art style painting? Let me know in the comments section below. Since I wanted to paint a landscape in the daytime, I'm drawing in the sun right now. But I didn't want to have a bright yellow sun, so I'm going to be painting in the blue and then applying white to it, but you'll see that later on. I'm painting in the first layer of the sky in the background. I'm using a combination of white and a little bit of primary blue and taking it all the way to the top. I've let that area dry completely and now I'm painting in suggestions of clouds. And now I'm starting on the river. It'll start on the left side and then gently slope down to the right. I'm using a little bit of burnt umber mixed with titanium white. Give it a chance to dry and then go in with a light shade of blue. For this part of the river, I'm going in basically with a little bit of titanium white mixed more with primary blue. Once that's dried, use a very little amount of burnt umber. The first part of the river is further away, and its colors are more muted. Using a little bit of burnt umber, I'm pushing that part of the river back into the skyline by muting it out a little bit. When you paint a landscape, the distant background is muted. There's almost no detail. The middle ground, which is the sky in this case, is generally going to be a little warmer. And the foreground, which is closest to you, 
is going to be more detailed and richer. The same thing with the water. The back part of the river on the left is going to be toned down and the water on the right is going to be more detailed. And then following the same rule of thumb, I'm painting in the hill with the bottom part being darker and more detailed. The top of the hill is receiving more light than the foreground or the bottom of the hill. So you want to blend those two together. It's kind of like, where is the light source coming from? Now you can do this with a uh, Pasca pen or another type of paint pen, but I wanted to use an example of using a script liner brush. When I first started using script liners, they were scary. They can look very intimidating, but they're great to use. They can achieve really fine lines that taper off to really thin lines as the pressure you apply to the paintbrush decreases. The way I like to paint a tree is to take the paintbrush and gently, slowly pull away from the tree itself. The further you come from the trunk of the tree, apply less and less pressure, thereby creating these really thin lines. And as you apply more tree branches, you thicken the tree trunk, carrying the stroke to the baseline. Just remember, when painting branches, the beginning of the branch is always going to be thicker than the end. It sounds all scary and stuff, but don't worry. The more practice using the brush, the easier it will become. You can have as many or as few branches as you like, depending upon what you're going for. Just imagine what the branches would look like and the tree itself with leaves on it. Does it have a lot of leaves? or not many at all. And are there any bird nests? Each bird nest will need a branch of its own. And since no two leaves are the same, the branches you paint in should vary in thickness and thinness. 
vary it up as much as you want. After looking at the tree, it looked kind of lonely, so I decided to paint in some blades of grass. I was going to paint in some flowers, which you can do yourself, but since we don't have spring here yet, I decided to forego that. But if you do want to add some flowers, what you can do is to Use the tip of your strip liner brush and dab in a little bit of color. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe. Celebrate each other, celebrate your creative inner voice, and paint along the way.